Linux is generally known to have an incredible range of hardware support, but as you probably expect, this is mainly focused around things that actually exist and you might actually want to use. Now, it might just be a single person in the entire world, but there is a device that you can run Linux on. And then there are things like this. Remove support for the Carrillo Ranch driver. As far as anybody can tell, this product never shipped. If it did, it shipped in 2007, and nobody has access to one anymore. Remove the FB driver and the backlight driver, along with this one for removing the MTD NOR driver. One of the things I'm fairly confident about is my knowledge of the tech space, and I've never heard of Carrillo Ranch. I don't know what this driver is, I don't know what the device would even look like, this has never appeared in my radar, and it's not like this is by some obscure company that nobody's ever heard of. This is a driver from Intel, and it's no surprise that I don't know anything about it because it seems like nobody knows what this product is. If you go and search for Carrillo Ranch on Google, on Brave, on whatever search engine you want to use, you won't find anything about this product. The first thing you'll probably see is a place called Leo Carrillo Ranch Historic Park in California. And the rest of it is going to be the articles about Linux removing support for Carrillo Ranch. There's nothing on this device. Even like super obscure devices, there'll be a forum post somewhere. There'll be a data sheet. There'll be something about this, but there's not. It just doesn't exist. Now that's at least what I could find, but Pharonix did find a little bit more. This seems to be a platform, a motherboard, for a product that did actually exist. A CPU called the EP80579. This was released in Q3 2008, and has a whopping one core, one thread, no hyperthreading, you get one. That is all. You also get a base frequency of 1.2 gigahertz. You know, it's more than one. It's not a lot, but it's more than one, and has a process node of 90 nanometer. Man, that was a long time ago. Also, this isn't a desktop CPU, anything like that. This is an embedded CPU. And I'm sure for the appropriate embedded workloads back in 2008, this is a perfectly reasonable CPU. I'll get into what those workloads are in just a bit. But where do these drivers actually come from? Because drivers don't just magically pop into existence, and it's kind of hard to write drivers for a product that doesn't exist. What often happens prior to a device's release, especially with a company like Intel that is very friendly towards open source, they will make the drivers, make sure they're available, and then when the device ships, it just works without any problem whatsoever. They do the same on Windows, so they might as well do the same on Linux if they actually care about the platform. Either they write the drivers themselves in-house, or they go to some third party that has a better understanding of the system they're trying to write for, and then pay them to do it. In this case, the latter is what happened. So the first driver, this was written by a group, if we scroll down to this bit here, Tungsten Graphics. Now the second driver, this was written by a different organization. That one being MontaVista Software. Now for those of you that have been involved in the Linux space for a really long time, since roughly the early 2000s, you may recognize the name Tungsten Graphics. And there's a good reason for that, because in the early 2000s, they were the company that was primarily driving the development of Mesa. And then they got acquired by VMware, and then they were shut down in 2009. Now, there is still a registered domain, presumably owned by VMware. The problem is it points to a landing page. Even though they're sitting on it and doing absolutely nothing with it, they still technically own the name Tungsten Graphics, and they probably don't want a new company spinning up that just uses that name. Now, as for MontaVista, this is a company that still does exist. Nowadays, providing support for Rocky Linux, which puts them into a fairly rocky position, but they do offer various other services as well. They're a general, like, IT support company. And here's the really fun thing. They are so proud they made that driver so many years ago, they list this on their homepage. We have long experience in SOC and third-party reference hardware boards. 
As an example, in 2006, we developed the MTD Carrillo Ranch driver, part of the Intel Carrillo Ranch SoC product. See this link right here. Now, this link links to the Tom's Hardware article about it being dropped. Now, speaking of Tom's Hardware, they did a little bit more digging on Carrillo Ranch and noticed a specific term that showed up in the driver text, LE80578. If we search for it in here, right here, Intel 80578 Vermillion. Oftentimes, especially when you're looking at a product from a company like Intel, there'll be various different names for a product. You have things like the marketing name that's used in all the material that, you know, sounds fancy, like Ivy Bridge, Sky Lake, Tiger Lake, all of these different names. And then you have some sort of internal engineering name, and that's more likely what this is, or the name of a specific board that's available. But searching for LE80578 gives us a lot more results. Now, it's still not a desktop platform, but we already assume that this is some sort of embedded system. What it does give us is this right here, an HP LaserJet printer. If we search for LE80578 in the processor section right here, that is what it is. And right now over on Newegg, there are even boards for sale. 83.99 US dollars, HP LaserJet, MFP, CM4540, Intel LE80578, 800 megahertz. So presumably that is a board for this specific printer right here, unless they have other printers that are sharing a fairly similar structure, which is, you know, entirely possible. But while they do mention this thing, they don't have any mention of this. So, this clearly exists in some fashion, but maybe it has, like, another name? I don't really know. Like, this entire situation is really, really confusing. But even if it does exist, as it says on Pharonix, chances are no one is going to be running a mainline Linux kernel on this 1.2 gigahertz single-core 32-bit processor in 2024. And considering it seems like it's an embedded system for a printer, I think that's pretty fair to say. Now, this isn't the first time that support for some unreleased hardware has been dropped from the kernel, and it's probably not going to be the last time. A very recent example was once again another Intel product, that being Thunder Bay. This seems to be some sort of dedicated computer vision hardware. I don't really know what value it would have had, but they bought a company called Movidius and then just did nothing with it and just cancelled the entire project. They had drivers in the kernel and then the drivers just got removed. I have no doubt it's going to happen again and it's probably going to happen again from Intel. Intel has a lot of money to let engineers do a lot of things and sometimes those ideas are good ideas and then sometimes those ideas are good ideas but Intel doesn't see a way to make money from them, so they go away. But let me know down below, does Carrillo Ranch actually exist? Do you have some Carrillo Ranch hardware? If you do, I want to know. I need to see pictures of it. But you probably don't, so let me know what your favorite Intel CPU generation is. Yeah. That works. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm not going to address what's written on the board.